Hello, everyone. Thank you for the opportunity to present my IP version 6 home network project. I'd like to thank Lanoc Program Committee for selecting my lightning talk. My name is Jordan, and I work at Slumberjay as a network engineer. As you can see on the right, I'm also a Hurricane Electric IP version 6 enthusiast. You can also certify your IP version 6 ability there too. This project requires zero programming skills. Uh, because the only programming skill I have currently is Cisco CLI. Let's start with the IP version 6 adoption rate. At 52%, United States is still fall behind India at 69% and Belgium at 59%. But we are in front of the rest of the world. Why the lack of adoption? Well, in my opinion, many enterprises still can see the immediate benefit to adopt IP version 6. This causes many internet providers hesitate to provide IP version 6 as well. There are also unforeseen potential security vulnerabilities in it from using IP version 6. And there is still a lack of support in many popular web and mobile applications, as well as smart devices, like smart TV, for example. Let's start with a brief introduction to IP version 6. This is a picture of IANA. IP version 6 address space in a pie chart. Approximately 85% of the IP version 6 address space is reserved for future definition and use, and is not to be assigned by IANA. So there are still a lot of available space in the 15% that we are using. So this is the breakdown of, of the pie chart. 000 is used by unspecified loopback and embedded IP version 4 address. 001 is obviously used by global unicast address. 011 is used by NET64 well-known prefix. 111 is used by unique local unicast, link local unicast, and multicast. We still have untouched space in 010, 100, 101, and 110. And still a lot of space in 000, 011, and 111 reserved for future use. I'm gonna, I'm gonna skip this part because this is just a breakdown of the previous slide. So the easiest method to try IP version 6 at home is using, is using dual stack, which means use both IP version 6 and 4 all together. If your ISP support the SCP version 6 with prefix delegation option, use it. If your home router modem does not support the SCP V6PD, like in my case, my Netgear uh, router modem doesn't support it, make it as a bridge and use another capable router behind it. This is the, the workflow picture. So back in December 2019, I was looking for the most cost-effective and reliable solution. After doing several research, I picked Ubiquity because is based on Viata Linux. No, actually, because it's the most affordable UTM solution in the market. Disclaimer, I'm not endorsing a specific vendor here. I selected my equipment because they are the least expensive option to conduct my experiment. So here's the breakdown. $100 for the USG, another 100 for the controller, another 100 for the access point, and then two Raspberry Pis for my internal and external services, like DNS server, network monitoring, web server, et cetera. And of course, we I need a password manager because I'm going to create a lot of credentials for each of these devices. And just for fun, host a website in uh, Raspberry Pi and point a DNS name using Google domain name here. So my Comcast internet connection is 100 Mbps in and out, uh, 100 Mbps in and 5 Mbps out. That's why I use this. If you have one GBPS internet connection, you might consider UDM Pro, uh, which supports 10 GBPS connection. If you have, if you want a more stable connection than wireless, nowadays managed switches are cheap. I pick TP-Link managed switch because it only costs 30 US dollar. As you can see, I have space constraint in my apartment. For this project, I'm using just a small space on top of my drawer, right beside my smart TV. So here are the features of my uh, Raspberry Pis. So the first Ras Raspberry Pis uh, serve um, DNS server using PyHole, Cacti for uh, network monitoring tool, and an ECRSA uh, certificate 
30 server for hosting my HTTPS website. And then second, Raspberry Pi uh, provide open VPN web server, uh, Apache 2 web server, less encrypt for my HTTPS website and uh, firewall. And in both, I use fail to ban and uh, passwordless SSH method to access the, the using SSH. As you can see here, my pie hole shows that 27% of my home network traffic is IPv6. Most of them are iPads, iPhones, and my home Windows 10 laptop. As you can see here, Cacti is still powerful and easy to set up based on SNMP. I can uh, see my um, WAN interface utilization here and my CPU and memory utilization over time. As you can see here, Linux commands on my firewall to check my IPv6 interfaces, neighbors, route, and pings. The left-hand side is my Windows 10 laptop IPv6 um, verification. This is simply ipconfig, and this is simply stress route minus six to facebook.com. And the right, the right-hand side is my iPhone trace route to google.com using Hurricane Electric network tools. So using TCP dump on the USG, I can capture uh, my phone Facebook traffic. So uh, I found out that um, my Facebook app chose uh, IPv6 over IPv4. So as I mentioned before, my home website using Raspberry Pi exposed both IPv4 and 6. And I set up a Cisco HTTP IPSLA probe from my company towards both uh, IPv4 and 6 addresses. And as you can see here, over time, the web performance looks similar. Conclusion. So in terms of web performance, IPv6 is similar to IPv4. You might be surprised that you already use IPv6 in your phones without you knowing it. Just Google search, what is my IP? And if you're in the United States, chances are you're already using IPv6 to run Google Maps, search, etc. Number two, it will be cool if all internet providers in North America can provide IPv6 with no additional cost. I still find enterprise ISPs don't currently support it. Number three, adding security features at home can be a reasonable justification to purchase the required devices. Number four, you'll have fun and learn a lot. Thank you for your time. Feel free to leave any comments or feedback to my email. If you're interested in how I did it in detail, you can see at this GitLab page. Thank you. Thank you.